around here, this is uh, not the most comfortable place to draw. Uh, but, you know, for years I've been drawing at this old workbench. I've uh, used it for assemblies. I've used it as a junk catcher. Um, but it's time now to retire this and build something that's going to be more functional, uh, more versatile, more utilitarian for my shop. And uh, I've got a few ideas. I've sketched out some designs. Now, you know I can't draw, so don't you dare laugh when I show you this. But uh, I want to give you an overview. And uh, we'll get started on this project pretty soon and uh, see how it shapes up. So, this old bench uh, started its life as a store-bought thing. Uh, it came knocked down. You had to put it together. I remember that. Although it's, I don't know how many years ago I got this thing. Um, it's metal uh, with a, a particle board top with a little uh, uh, formica laminate over the top of it, very thin. And uh, it was quite a bit shorter as well. So uh, I've modified this over the years. One of the first things that I did was I built a base for it. Um, the base was uh, pretty well done. It uh, was built so that the legs of this bench nested down into it, but can be lifted out, tried to make it a little bit modular. Put what I thought at the time were some pretty good casters on it, um, since I've found a source of better casters, but, uh, but it's worked okay. And uh, that, adding that base gave me a shelf on the bottom and also raised the height up. Now, one of the problems is, is this shelf, even though I thought I built it pretty well, over the years has sagged a little bit and uh, doesn't really affect the functionality of the bench, but I just don't like the way it looks. Now, this old bench has a couple of drawers in it, <coughs> which are okay. The problem is, is that when I try to use it as a desk, I can't get my legs underneath it because of the shelf and these drawers that are in the way. Um, the top on this bench was originally quite a bit smaller. Actually, the edge of it just comes to right here, about two and a half inches inside where it is now. And it ends right here, which is uh, probably about eight or nine inches shorter on both ends than this new top that I built. This top is double layered <coughs> with Formica on top, and it's built so that it nests over the top of this top and can actually be lifted off. It's, uh, it's served its purpose really well, but it's a little rickety because there's no cross bracing in the back to, uh, to keep it from moving around. I've thought about adding that, but then I keep thinking that I just need to replace this and do something better. So I want to build something that's got a little bit longer top for assembly purposes, a little bit uh, wider front to back, again, for assembly purposes. I want to have a free area in the middle where I can scoop my stool up and do some drawing or, or reading or whatever I need to do. And I want to have some drawers on either side. I like drawers better than open shelves in a workshop for obvious reasons. Um, I'd like to make the top removable still <clears throat> so that it's still able to be moved around. And of course I want the whole thing to be mobile. I want it to be on wheels. So those are sort of my design criteria. And uh, I'll show you my drawings, and uh, we'll put some measurements on it, and then I'll show you how we're going to get this project rolling. Okay, so the truth is, this is pretty much how I draw every project. A um, little scrap of paper, this one happens to be out of a little pad. Um, I'll sketch out the overall size that I'm looking for, sketch I might add quite poorly and uh, put in my overall dimensions and then start working out the dimensions of the components uh, that, that make up the piece. Uh, in this case I did a little uh, perspective drawing <laughs> poorly, uh, figured out how I was going to build the top and wrote in my overall dimensions. I did a sort of a front view and I did a sort of an end view to get the dimensions written in. And most of the time, well, almost all the time, this is all I would work off of to build a project. But uh, I thought since I was going to share this with you, I'd try to do something a little bit more formal. 
So I attempted to do a uh, drawing. <clears throat> now, this is an attempt to do a perspective drawing, and I'm really not very good at this. I think I missed that day in art class. Um, but uh, you can get the general idea if you'll stop laughing for a second. Um, the overall uh, new desk workbench will be 7 feet, 84 inches long, and I want to make it 30 inches from front to back nice size for using for glue ups it'll be a humongous desk it'll be a huge junk catcher it'll do everything this bench has done but uh, hopefully a little better a little more comfortably and a little bit more sturdy I uh, want to build two pedestals that this top will sit on and the top will actually be removable so it'll nest over these two things which will hold it in place these, of course, will be on wheels. I intend to have some drawers. I don't know what size yet. I just kind of sketched in some lines so you can get the idea. Uh, each one of these pedestals will be 24 inches wide, 26 inches deep. That'll leave me a free space in the middle of 28 inches. Plenty of room to slide in, put my stool here, get my legs underneath, and be able to do some comfortable work. Each pedestal <clears throat> the cabinet itself will be 33 inches high. The casters that I'll be using are 3 inches high, which gives me 36 inches. And the top, nominally, will be 2 inches thick. So I'm going to have about a 38 inch overall height, which is pretty close to what this uh, bench is. And I found it to be comfortable for drawing, assembly, and a lot of other things. Um, the uh, top itself, as I said, I'm going to build like a torsion box. So it's completely flat. I'll cover it with Formica because it's really easy to get glue drips and things off of Formica. And uh, I'll have an overhang of two inches on the front, two inches on the back, and I've forgotten, but I want to say it's four or five inches on either end. The idea of being able to clamp around the edges if I need to, to hold something into place. These uh, pedestals will be built like the cabinets in the rest of my shop. Uh, they're very sturdy. Uh, I've had some of them for years and years and years, and they just hold up. They're like brick battleships. So I'll show you how I build those typically, and uh, we'll get started on this project. Okay, I wheeled this over uh, just to give you an idea of the basic construction uh, techniques that I use to build cabinets in the uh, down-to-earth woodworking shop. This is uh, pretty typical. This uh, happens to be the cabinet that my mortising machine is uh, sitting on. Basically, I do the same thing every time. I build a basic carcass with 3 quarter inch cabinet grade plywood. Uh, I use dado construction throughout. Typically, what I'll do is I'll cut the sides first to size, and then I'll figure out where the dados need to be and run those. I do that with a router. Uh, this particular cabinet, because of the weight of the mortising machine and the weight of the machine I had on it before, I actually put two pieces of three-quarter inch ply on the top, both set into dados, and two pieces on the bottom. Now, I do two pieces on the bottom on every cabinet, and the reason being is because I use casters, and I want to have a good, firm uh, place to mount those casters. I use locking casters. Um, these are the type that you step on, press them down, and they're locked. Put your toe under it, flip it up, and it's unlocked. And it does roll quite easily um, on those units. Now, I uh, use dividers between every, uh, every drawer on this cabinet. Again, three-quarter inch plywood. And uh, I do that partly for rigidity and uh, partly to keep the drawers isolated so that there's no dust or anything coming in. These are uh, th full extension drawer slides, which allows me to get to the back of the drawer in every instance. They're not over extension, but they're full extension, so they work out pretty good. Drawer construction, typically I use half inch cabinet grade plywood, and I just do a, a lock mortise joint on here, front and back cut a groove around the bottom, and in these particular drawers I used a quarter inch masonite for the drawer bottoms, the smooth side up, and it works really good and it's relatively inexpensive. I do the drawers inset and use poplar fronts on them. Poplar is pretty inexpensive and easy to work. 
It's what I call soft hard wood and uh, it, it does an okay job. And then I use poplar, uh, I rip it to size and use that as edging all the way around on the plywood to hide the uh, edges of the plywood and make everything come out flush here. The sides, of course, that's just your uh, basic plywood. And in the back, where all the edges sort of come out together, I face this off and leave a little inset with the back. Now the back is three-quarter inch plywood as well because I want something really sturdy in there to prevent any racking on these cabinets. Again, nothing real fancy, but uh, very workable, very sturdy. This is a very old unit, a uh, little dinged and donged around the edges and stuff. Uh, but it's holding up and working fantastic. And uh, these drawers are really handy to keep stuff in. Uh, this one's not even full, so uh, you know when I get some more drawer space over there on the on the uh, desk and workbench, man, I'll have lots of little cubby holes to put stuff in. So we'll get started on this in the next video. Right now, I got to go get the plywood so I can get started. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.